Hello and welcome to one of our ClarityRx master's class. This is Carla Keene, CEO and developer of ClarityRx, and thank you for spending some time with me today. We're going to talk a little bit more about shedding some light on LED skin phototherapy. Many of you know the basic fundamentals of how LED lights work in the skin, but this master's class is really designed to take a deeper dive into the science behind what we know as skin photomodulation. LED, or skin photomodulation, is really the latest form of phototherapy. Light therapy, or phototherapy, is really defined as the application of exposing skin to certain light wavelengths for therapeutic purposes. This process has a really unique ability to stimulate or inhibit cell signaling pathways for many types of skin rejuvenation. Photomodulation is a process that manipulates or regulates the activities of our cells using these light sources without any thermal or collateral damage. This is achieved using portions of a visible and invisible light spectrum that does not contain any ultraviolet rays. Thus, it achieves a non-thermal, non-invasive, and non-ablative method of skin rejuvenation. So how does it really work? LED photomodulation uses a very low intensity light emitting diode. These create a very process similar to where plants photosynthesis use chlorophyll to convert sunlight into cellular building blocks or cellular energy to actually fuel the growth of the plant. Light emitted by LEDs is absorbed by the skin cells and produces a remarkable cascade of events within the tissue. This light therapy, sometimes referred to as photomodulation or photobiomodulation, is a very low-level light therapy. So what really happens in the tissue? When low-energy laser light passes through the skin, different components of the skin and the cells are affected by various wavelengths, or in this case, color, which simulates certain beneficial effects. Let's talk briefly about the difference between LEDs, light emitting diodes, and laser beams. LED technology normally uses one or more individual wavelengths, and light is delivered at a very low intensity. Whereas lasers and IPL laser lights deliver light in very short, or what's known as a millisecond pulse, at extremely high power. LED uses a more constant, lower energy output, which is a much more non-destructive treatment. While the purpose of a laser is to selectively destroy a very specific targeted area, that's why a very high energy output is needed, the purpose of an LED is to stimulate rather than destroy a very specific target. In essence, there is no collateral damage done to the skin's tissue with LED light therapy. LED is a very physical, visible, colored light, most often and most popular in red, blue, green, and amber. When these infrared light things are incorporated, those are invisible to the human eye. So again, LED can be seen where infrared lights cannot be seen. Some of the benefits of LED photomodulation is that a wide range of the Fitzpatrick skin types can easily be treated and safely treated without any downtime. Because of the low intensity and specific wavelength control of the light emitting diodes, there's no thermal damage again to the epidermis. Therefore, we should not see any downside, any redness or erythema or irritation or any prolonged redness uh, in the tissue itself. The best news of all is that after a series of LVT treatments, fibroblasts that are stimulated deep within the tissue can continue to produce new collagen for up to six months, and lymph activity is increased, helping to reduce edema or fluid buildup in the tissue. Increasing lymph activity can also help to speed up the healing process within the tissue. Because the lymph system is responsible for helping the body to eliminate waste and bacteria, we often see a quicker healing process with those compromised skin types. Microphages destroy microorganisms so that the lymph system can begin the process of removing them or detoxifying them from the body. Some critical factors, though, for producing the right types of results 
there are so many different types of equipment on the market. So we have to be careful that the equipment that we use actually does what we say it can do. The first thing to take into consideration is the factor of what's known as perimeter loss of light. A common shortcoming of a lot of LED light therapy devices is that they produce a very uneven delivery of the light energy to the skin tissue. Therefore, we have what's known as perimeter loss. This is when the treatment head is too large for the facial contours and the light energy escapes on the peripheral edges of the treatment head itself. So to achieve more predictable results across the facial treatment area, the treatment device head should be small enough to fit the contours of the face and be in very close contact with the skin. Hence, our clarity lights have been designed so that there is a very uh, moderate amount and less fluency variation across the face and the treatment head itself. This results in a much more even producing service. The second critical factor is what's called inverse square law of light. And really what this means is it's another way to have loss of light when the LED device or the panel is placed too far from the skin itself. This is what's known as the decay of light intensity, and this comes with distance. There's a less light at the surface of the skin this way. Specifically, the intensity of the light also decreases in proportion to the distance that it has to travel. So in essence, the closer these LED light emitting diodes are to the skin, the better the service will be. LED light therapy equipment that is placed even one to two inches away from the surface of the skin will allow some loss of light again on the edges of the equipment and loss of light at the skin level will reduce the amount of activity that we should experience from the light itself. So our clarity lights, again, are designed to be in, almost in contact with the skin for maximum light energy or to hover just briefly above the surface of the skin. And we'll talk about the reasons for that and why that's important in just a moment. So let's talk briefly why the difference between handheld units and what's called photo recycling. I'm often asked why we don't have one that just hovers, where a client can lay underneath it and we can also be doing other services. Well, there's a good reason for that. Handheld versus what's known as photo recycling is photo, photon recycling is a process in which the treatment head or panel captures light that's reflected back from the skin and then delivers it back to the skin. So basically in this process with the panel style unit, the panel is placed several inches away from the skin. The photon recycling is lost due to the distance of the panel to the skin and the perimeter loss of light. So again, not as progressive as a service. The Clarity LED treatment head is designed so that it provides, again, a very uniform light energy across the treatment head while minimizing the loss of light on the perimeter. The light itself and the optics in which these lights are made are other reasons why there are so many variables to the equipment that's on the market. In the way that we wear eyeglasses or sunglasses, the lenses on these devices can drastically reduce or block light to the eye area. The principle in applied to light therapy equipment or devices is that if it has a lens cover or a plastic cover over the LED emitting diode, it can also lessen the amount of light getting to the skin tissue. The clarity and quality of the lens covering or small specks of debris can reduce the energy output. So the lens cover will hold in the heat and that's generated from the LEDs, therefore reducing the amount of light efficiency and slowly degrading each of the LEDs potential. Clarity Light's LED has been engineered with LEDs that are slightly recessed into the treatment head with our Clarity Lights, therefore maximizing the light output and not inhibiting the amount of output because of the casing that it's in. No plastic lenses or covers needed. It's actually receded into the head itself. The other factor to take into consideration is pulse versus continuous wavelengths. The concept of pulsing, which is really like the intense pulse like lasers, comes from the thought that if one pulses the intense light, it would reduce or minimize the thermal damage to the non-treated surrounding skin tissue. However, with LEDs, we don't have to worry about that. Pulsing is used to control high heat energy. 
During the pulse delay, where there's no heat energy being applied, the tissue is allowed to cool, preventing permanent thermal tissue damage. With LEDs, we're not using these high heat energy outputs or high heat laser energy lights to destroy or injure skin tissues. Therefore, there would be no need to pulse LEDs. The clarity lights uses what we call a continuous waveform, which is continually uh, depositing these light rays into the skin for better results. Keep in mind that if one were to pulse or flash an LED, there would be a period of a no light which would decrease the light output. Having various settings with LEDs, such as a high setting or low setting, does not really apply or is not necessary because LEDs are either on or they're off. The variables that make some LEDs more perfect, proficient than others are the things we just talked about. The output, the lens case, how, how you hover it from the skin, all of those factors really make a big difference. LED phototherapy is based on cells absorbing light energy and not whether or not there is high or low settings or a pulsing light. LED light treatments, with LED light treatments, we want to really maximize the output through the entire treatment. I often get asked about questions about jewels uh, and why those are important. Let's talk a little bit more about what jewels really are. Sometimes companies will state that their particular devices deliver a certain amount of jewels. Jewel is really a term that describes energy, and jewel is expressed this way, the joules per centimeter squared. If you read this way, joules per second per square centimeter. As you have just read this equation, you may or may not have noticed that the equation is expressed as joules per second in a square centimeter. We would also need to know then over what period of time. So the formula should really look like 50 joules over centimeter square for 15 minutes. A lot of companies don't disclose how long it takes for their particular device to reach those levels. So it becomes very misleading, or what I call misleading marketing claims. Some companies who retail LED devices will state that their LED device or equipment delivers a certain amount of joules. For example, our device delivers 100 joules or 700 joules. Based on those numbers, the consumer will choose what the highest number of joules are because it sounds more powerful and better. This is extremely misleading and very unfortunate. There are several issues and marketing problems with this logic. The problem is that if you state that an LED device delivers 100 joules, it's not clear and it's very vague. Is it 100 joules per second, per minute, per hour, per day, per week? So basically the goal is to deliver the highest amount of joules in the shortest amount of time for more condensed uh, light source. So is 100 joules in one inch square area in a six inch square area or in a one foot square area. Again, the size or, or the uh, area in which you're treating with the device and the size of the device head is another variable that we need to take a look at. So herein lies the difference really between the over-the-counter handheld devices and we, we use as professionals in treatment. There's no way that the handheld devices for home care have the outage, the wattage, the wavelength, the continuous pulse length, the amount of joules, the size of the treatment head, the area in which we hold it from the face to deliver the same amount of service or the same type of service that we do in treatment with the Clarity Lights. LED wavelengths is not just about using the color red or the color blue or the color green. It's really about using very specific wavelengths or very specific colored wavelengths or very specific infrared wavelengths referred to as nanometers to improve various conditions on the skin and body. I get a lot of questions about nanometers and nanometers really just measures depth if you think about it that way. Here's a description of what I'm trying to talk about. On a very continuous waveform spectrum here, you can see where the different lights or wavelengths reach a certain depth or nanometer within the skin tissue itself. Stay focused primarily on the blue, the red, and the green. You can see that the nanometers of depth, the blue is a more superficial light, 
the green is a medium depth light and the red becomes the longest depth light where and if you think about the intended use of each of these different colors it makes a lot more sense which is depicted in the next slide when I get to it let's talk a little bit about uh, the recommendations for specific wavelengths or specific color we want to focus primarily on red, green, and blue since those are the most prominent uh, LEDs used. The LED red coupled with infrared, which is found in our clarity lights, is really designed to strengthen the dermis and minimize the appearance of wrinkles and fine lines. Um, the, the way that this works is that it really stimulates fibroblast production, which grows collagen, which gives the skin its strength. Red is also known as something that can reduce pain or inflammation. Blue, which is the next level, is really to control oil. It helps to control the acne bacterium, the bacteria that's found deep within the pore, and it's able to also act as an anti-inflammatory, so it's the perfect selection for more of an acneic client client where the red is ideal for more of a maturing client or those clients that are starting to see some signs of aging. Keep in mind that no matter what light we choose, we can still work to prevent, correct, and maintain these conditions within the skin. So the sooner a client starts these LED skin therapy services, the more preventative they will be. Once we start to see these conditions on the surface of the skin and we go after it a little bit more aggressively with the lights to diminish the, re the existing conditions, it might take longer, it might take more often services. And then once we reach the goals, we wanna always maintain those goals with an ongoing light therapy device. Okay, so now back to the depth of these uh, wavelengths. The different wavelengths or different color or frequencies in the skin is really how, in essence, these lights work. Again, staying focused on the top three here, the light that you see here in blue is anywhere from 450 to 495 nanometers of depth. You can see kind of where that finishes off. Uh, deep within the bottom layers of the epidermis, which is primarily where we're going to start to see that P. acne bacterium start to grow. Uh, and so the light invariable can also enter deep within the follow, follicle and kill that bacteria. In the surrounding tissue, if we have any signs of erythema or postular activity, it can also help to sedate or act as an anti-inflammatory around the tissue. The next is the green. Green typically hovers between 495 and 570 nanometers, and this is going a little bit deeper into the tissue. The reason for this is that the green light is really designed to uh, control the amount of melanocyte activity uh, in the surface layers of the dermis and the lower layers of the epidermis where we start to see the melanin production occur. So you can see that the green is a little bit deeper than the blue. Now let's cross over here to where we see the red. The red is hovering between 650 and 950 nanometers, which you can see has the ability to go deep within the dermis. And here is where we start to see the clusters of fibroblasts. And fibroblasts are really responsible for growing collagen fibers to give the skin uh, a little bit firmer toned texture. Um, a little bit more spring back. And not only does it do that, but you can see deep within the dermis here, we see our nerve fibers and capillary structures and vascularity here. So what we also get is a, is a very mild stimulation of all the mechanisms deep within the dermis, which increases oxygen flow and blood flow to the surface layers of the skin. It warms up just ever so slightly, uh, especially with a combination of the infrared lights to stimulate all these mechanisms as well. So basically, again, to reiterate, we have blue that's really indicated for more as a remedy for acne and problem acne skin or problem prone skin as a preventative, corrective, and uh, a maintenance service. We then have the green light. The green light is really indicated for melanocyte production or to inhibit melanin from forming in the skin. It also can help to lighten and brighten any pre-existing pigmentation abnormalities. So again, as a uh, preventative, 
corrective and a maintenance service. I love the green light, and we're going to talk about this a lot more in the weeks to come, uh, not only for the face, but also remember for the chest and the hands and forearms, where we see quite a bit of discoloration or pigmentation abnormalities. Whereas the blue is really ideal for more of a chest or back acne, and then the red, really ideal for the hands and forearms to help stimulate collagen and tighten and tone and improve texture as well. So, and the uh, red is ideal also for the chest if your clients have a lot of lines and premature aging uh, happening on the chest. So, I hope this dives a little bit deeper into the technology behind LEDs. Uh, it's also the last but not least thing to talk about is what do we pair these devices with? We have the ability to utilize serums and our masks to really help to drive these types of services uh, to be more progressive. We also want to think about what we need to send home for our clients to continue these services at home for best results. Thank you so much for joining us. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to reach out to us directly. Um, also, make sure you follow us on our social media. We do lots of educational postings on those platforms. And again, thank you so much for your time. Bye-bye.